All right, hey, how's everyone doing? Yeah. Wow, considering how many people in this room are fasting today, I'm very surprised. <laughs> that was a lot of energy. Um, so just to get a feel for who's in the crowd, make some noise if you've been to one of our events before. <laughs> Love to see it. Uh, now make some noise if this is the first time that you're joining us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what's your name? I'm just kidding, I know your name. <laughs> Judy, I promise you are in for a very exciting, fun evening. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ritu. I started this open mic series um, two years ago. Um, I see a few people here who were actually at the very first open mic we had. And my goal was to create a space to have difficult discussions, um, nuanced conversations, while using humor and storytelling to just make it more approachable and welcoming. So you can think of it like TEDx meets Comedy Central meets group therapy. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it's natural for us to all have different kinds of different points of view. And um, this is a place where you can have these healthy debates and dialogues. So um, this is actually our 12th open mic night, which is very exciting. Um, and today wouldn't have been possible without our team. So please give it up for Zara, Amar, and Tanishka. So when we actually launched this event, we did not anticipate the TikTok ban becoming <laughs> such big news. Um, so it ended up being really great timing. Um, no, actually, we influenced the house to pass the bill <laughs> to ban TikTok so we could have a more interesting discussion today. So um, this is actually going to be, um, as I'm graduating high school and preparing to move to college, I'm transitioning over the series to my team. Um, I know it's really sad. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna miss me. Um, but <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, you're gonna be in really amazing hands, though. Uh, so, without further ado, I want to introduce your co-hosts for tonight. Please welcome Amar and Zara. They're hilarious. You guys can say you knew them before they got famous. Give it up for them. And if you didn't know, our today's topic is about social media and its influence. Double tap for truth. That's right. But first, let's get into the stuff you guys are actually here for, the snacks. No, I'm just kidding, but if you do want to indulge a little bit while we have this interactive conversation and discussion about social media and how it's affected us, feel free to enjoy yourselves at the back. Also, I just wanted to add that it is bittersweet that R2 is leaving us, but me and Omar have so many great things planned for the future, and we are so excited to see where this takes us for the next couple of years. Now, do we have any social media influencers in the room here? Woo! Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got one in the back. Uh, what's her name? Ritu. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, could you uh, explain what you do on um, whatever platform? So, I, I have a comedy channel on YouTube. I got 161 subscribers. <laughs> Subscribe to Ritu Does Comedy. <laughs> Ritu Does Comedy. Give it up for Ritu Does Comedy. So just like Ritu, we inspire, we just, like we strongly encourage you to create your own social media platform and start a live right now. This is a great uh, time to practice this, and you can advertise for us. Of course, of course. And also, social media has taken everyone by the storm. It has so much power over how we behave, how we interact with people, and what our opinions are actually like. Believe it or not, social media shapes people's opinions on geopolitical issues as well. But something small that I do that has affected me from social media is I let my phone eat my food first. <laughs> Unfortunately, I am one of those people that takes pictures of my meals before I actually indulge in them myself. Or do we remember after 2020 the TikTok dances that people were doing while walking from class to class? It was an embarrassing time in our life, but we all know that social media has changed the way we behave and interact in our daily life, which is why we decided to hold this event. Exactly. But if you're anything like my mom, you'll begin to think that social media is the cause of all of your problems. Yesterday, I tripped on a rock, and that was the reason, because I went on Instagram earlier. <laughs> um, I got a fever once, and that was because I went on YouTube. I don't know how. But yeah, there's no scientific proof for this, just so you know. And speaking of social media, I can see that some uncles and aunties have their phones open. Give us a follow at, at The Intersection Series on Instagram and YouTube. Give it up for the Instagram and YouTube. <laughs> 
That's right. And while we've caught some of you guys on your devices, that means that you guys have experience with being on social media, which, is, which means that you guys can share your perspective on social media with us today at today's event. If right you ever feel inspired, go ahead and just raise your hand and look me in the eye and I'll put you on the board. Exactly. Now that Marl is feeling so chatty right now, we think that it's great to have him start off the performance with his act and how social media affects our psychology. Give it up for Amar, everyone. So uh, we did a quick poll earlier, as you know. Um, we only had one social media influencer. Very <laughs> inspiring, of course. Uh, I aspire to be a great social media influencer like that. Um, I don't have an Instagram, I don't have a TikTok. But I will still speak about this event to the best of my knowledge. So let's get right into it. My first topic for today is misinformation. So recently, I'm not sure if you guys know, scientists have done a study. They found that it's actually really good to be on TikTok for about one to one and a half hours every day. A lot of kids were saying that like, okay, a lot of people online are saying that TikTok and social media is bad for you and da 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 screen time, this, that, it affects your mental health. But researchers have recently found about one to one and a half hours of social media is very, very good for you. It improves your cognitive ability and you can perform better. Now, did, any, did everyone hear what I just said? Nods? Yeah. Exactly. Kind of process it. Oh, process it. <laughs> exactly. Because everything I just said was complete baloney. Thank you. You don't have to be like, okay, what is he saying now? Yeah, that was complete baloney. Don't do that. Yes. So, misinformation, if I was able to convince you right now, raise your hand. Okay, we have a gullible for you. <laughs> so if you really think about it, social media has its influence on us today and misinformation. And this misinformation isn't just random misinformation. It's not like, okay, some, some random genius online is saying stuff. Everyone online thinks they're a genius and they try to emphasize whatever they want. Let's be real here. But what I'm focusing on today is, oh yeah, I should probably mention that we're keeping a timer about seven minutes per speaker, so just keep, make, keep sure, make sure to limit your speeches to around there, but yeah, no problem. Um, but social media online has influenced my life um, in my subconscious decisions, if that makes sense. Let's process that here, take a, like, a second to internalize that. So I play the piano, as you know. Uh, I've been playing for about seven years. Um, I'm not like every other kid who just plays it to get into colleges or impress their <laughs> uncles or aunts or impress their mom and dad. But when I go on TikTok, it is terrible. I don't think you understand how bad it is on TikTok. I will open my phone right now. I don't have my phone. But if I open my phone right now, there will be a video saying, like, how to play playing piano and impress your mom and dad. It's bad. You can take a marker. They, they take like a marker. They number it one, two, three, four, five on the keys. And they'll be like, to start playing piano, you can, you can press one and four, one, two, one, five. And I don't see anyone like shaking their head. So this is a very specific problem to me. But <laughs> it's a very big problem, trust me, folks, trust me. And the issue with this is I've seen it so much on my feet, I've started doing it in my actual plane. Uh -oh. It's insane. Like I'm doing a performance and I start remember one, two, three, four, three point one, four, one, five, nine. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and I start playing it in my actual piece. So just like that, social media can have bad influences on us, whether we think about it or we don't. But it can also have really good influences too. For instance, um, for instance, Coca-Cola. I, I wouldn't say this is a great one, but like, hey, let's just go with it. If you, one time, obviously I'm fasting, it's Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak, everyone. <laughs> if you go on social media today and you're going through your reels on Instagram, I'm sure the aunties know what I'm talking about, you'll notice that an ad will pop up of a guy taking a Coke can enjoying it, the nice cold feeling of water and drink that I don't get to experience until sunset. <laughs> it's so infuriating. And later, I, I just had to put it in the back of my mind, but you'll notice at the time when we break our fast or in thar, you'll notice, mom, dad, can I get a bottle of Coke? <laughs> like it has a subconscious effect, whether I think about it or not. This Coca-Cola can, it really affects me because I want Coke. And I can, I, now I, I can talk about it so much, I want Coke now. <laughs> so yeah. but. Misinformation is just one aspect of the effects of social media. But the second aspect is communication. Communication has changed or has been changed in so many ways in the last 20, 30 years. It's remarkable. I can't, not remarkable, it's like astounding. Like, it's crazy. Social media, believe it or not, um, I mean, tell me, raise a hand after I say this. 
How many people think that social media affects our personal interactions in person? Exactly, and you'd all be right. For instance, where's my phone? Can I borrow my phone real quick? I'll grab my phone. <laughs> I'm talking right now. I'm, I'm looking everyone in the eye. I'm giving a speech. Now, if I hold my phone right now, what's the most important thing in the room to me? Not you, it's this thing. Because I'm holding it. I, I'm subconscious, I, like, it's in the back of your mind. Oh, I'm gonna hold my phone. I, it's, he's not really giving me all full attention. I'm holding this phone right here. So when people have, when people try to prioritize social media over other things, and they start like fidgeting with their phone, holding their phone, it affects your personal interactions in, in person. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, that's what's over here. It's not like your <laughs> online interactions are everything being affected. But in my humble opinion, I think social media should be used to connect with other people for networking. It shouldn't be used for these useless things like posting the grass is green today. No one needs to know that. No one needs to know that like, you, have, you have a new Apple Watch or something. Like, just enjoy your life. So with that, I'd like to say two things for today. Keep in mind what you guys are processing and the misinformation online. Because it really affects you whether you think about it or you don't. It's subconsciously, it's in the back of your mind. And Sometimes it can be beneficial, but it can also be harmful, like the piano example, very specific to me. Um, and communication. Remember when you're communicating with other people, even the slightest thing can give it a, a message that you're not intending to. Social media can be used to connect with people online and you can build great relationships, but it shouldn't be used in the wrong way to, to mess up your personal interactions. And with that, I'd like to close. Thank you.